So hello everybody, welcome to another week of the Phil Marriott vlog. Once again, the week has just disappeared before my eyes. We're up to Thursday and I haven't vlogged anything this week so far. So I thought I'd sit down and kind of update you on what I've been up to, but also share a couple of things that I have recently bought and also share a recipe. It was Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. She said, I'd really love to see some vegan recipes that you do. I think that Sarah's a veggie. So um, yeah, even if you're vegan or not, I think you'll like the recipe that's coming up a bit later on. But anyway, let's just show you this because I've just had a delivery from HMV. I've been very much looking forward to receiving this. It recently went on sale. Didn't get around to buying it when it first came out. I think it was about 60 quid originally, but it's been reduced to 27 on HMV on their website. So I thought I'd snap it up. Um, it came out and I thought it was a little bit pricey at the time, even though it's a three CD box set. And I have to admit, um, this band I used to love when they first released their debut album, which is what I'm about to show you. Um, I was just obsessed with the Cranberries. Dolores O'Riordan as well, I was lucky enough to interview around the time of her, I think it was her first debut album, solo album. Um, which I can't remember the title for, but um, she was really lovely. I spoke to her on the phone, and that was during my time at Gaydar Radio. So anyway, let me show you this. I'm gonna open this. So this is a box set, which came out just after the sad news of her death. Um, and to be completely honest, I wasn't really a fan of the Cranberries album that came out after her death which I think was recorded obviously just before she passed away. But um, yeah, I wasn't mad on that. I think I've only listened to it a couple of times, but the first three albums I absolutely love. No, no Need To Argue I think was the second. But yeah, I think gradually over time their albums just became not so great. But the first album I adore. Now the first album's called Everybody Else Is Doing It, So Why Can't We? Um, I remember when this came out, I was working in Our Price at Surrey Keys in London and at the time, I think it was the album's buyer. And I just remember this album. No, actually before that, it was before Surrey Keys. I was working in Bromley. That was the very first time that I started working at Our Price. That was the first uh, shop that I worked in. And after that, I worked at quite a few Brixton, Surrey Keys, Wandsworth. But anyway, this album came out, I think it was 94 when this was released. And I remember moving back to London because I'd been living in Cornwall and my parents moved to London when I was 12. So we used to live in Kent, then I moved to Cornwall, then I ended up coming back because I just wanted to live in London again. Um, so this album came out and um, I just remember being obsessed by it. I loved her voice, Dolores's voice. Uh, it had a kind of melancholy about the album as well. The tunes were quite sad. Um, I mean, obviously Linga, that's the perfect example of sadness in the Cranberry songs, but the second album, No Need To Argue, again, really sad songs, but really good. Um, but this is the box set. So obviously they've reissued it. I mean, I've got to take my glasses off because I can't see what I'm reading. So it's the 25th anniversary edition, the original album remastered at Abbey Road. Um, 34 previously unreleased tracks, including early demos recorded as the Cranberry Saurus, because that's what the band was called originally before the Cranberries. Uh, unheard album sessions produced by Stephen Street, including lost Irish language album tracks uh, as well, BBC and RTE radio sessions from 91 to 93, and tracks from the band's first ever recorded live show and debut EP in 1991. So, I'm going to do a little unboxing. Now this has been reduced on Amazon as well, so it's not like I'm buying a complete bargain, although I have wanted this for, for ages. Because um, I've got the, if I can find it. So I bought the album on vinyl. Um, and um, yeah, gatefold edition. And to be honest, if I buy an album that I've already got on CD, I won't usually play on vinyl. Um, but obviously it's not, it's not a colour vinyl version, but um, quite a nice edition of it. So the CD box set, so there we go. So uh, it's four discs actually, I thought it was three discs, but obviously one of those is the original album. Uh, so the book. Some early shots. 
This is the first time I've seen this. Postcards, I'm guessing. Oh, poster. So postcards as well. I mean, I would imagine some fans would probably frame those. There we go. So, so a nice thing for collectors, a nice thing for fans, and also a nice bit of nostalgia um, and a tribute to Dolores, who we sadly lost. Um, I remember hearing the news. I was so sad. I mean, I've got to the age now where so many people that I've admired over the years, particularly when growing up, have passed away. I mean, obviously this week we've heard the sad news about Paul O'Grady. Such a massive support to the LGBT community as well. I mean, the work that he did for HIV and AIDS, awareness and, you know, campaigning against Section 28. I mean, alongside obviously all the work that he did on TV. I mean, he was so, so pivotal and so brilliantly outspoken as well in a really good way in a really supportive way I think for so many causes but then of course went mainstream but took his attitude with him I mean obviously he wasn't doing Lily Savage towards the end of his career but um, people don't forget that people don't forget Lily Savage I mean I was looking I was looking at some uh, footage some unreleased footage I mean it's been released obviously over the last few years but um, on YouTube of some of his TV shows and some of the outtakes of the bloopers, just hilarious. So do watch those. I know that um, so many people have been talking about him, rightly so as well, and paying tribute to him and the amazing work that he's done. But anyway, back to the Cranberries. So these are the CDs. So I'm looking forward to hearing those. And um, the other thing I bought was this, which is um, Aurora's album, A Different Kind of Human, step two. So it's the second version, because she released it in two parts. Um, up until now, I've always had this as a download, and I think I've got the, I think I've got the vinyl somewhere as well. So there we go. So the vinyl version, um, that's actually step one, I think. Let me just check. So this is the same. This is the same album that I've now got on CD, but I didn't have it on CD, so I always wanted to to have this. Um, a lot of her stuff's really rare. If you look on Discogs or eBay or Amazon, um, a lot of her albums you can't actually buy, particularly the coloured vinyl stuff, and it's really um, sought after. So, yeah. So the CD of that album, um, I was lucky enough to interview her a few times as well, three or four times I think. Um, and again, such a loyal fan base. Uh, I had really good hits for those videos. So check those out, I'll link them down below. And finally, I say finally, there's two more things, because I wanted to show you this vinyl that I've been buying recently. This is somebody who I've liked since 1981, as soon as I saw It's a Mystery on Top of the Pops. In fact, I saw her before that, because she was in a TV drama, which was on ITV, called Little Girls Don't. And she played this kind of tear away problem child that got involved with a gang and started stealing women's handbags and causing havoc and just being bad criminals. So I remember seeing her in that and she was brilliant in that. I mean, it was kind of like a 30 minute play for today type thing that was on ITV back in the late 70s, maybe early 80s. Um, but I must have seen it in 81 because it was just before Top of the Pops. And then I saw her on Top of the Pops doing It's a Mystery. And I thought to myself, I recognise her. I've seen her on TV and then I realised it was Little Girls Don't. But yeah, been a fan ever since. Interviewed her again loads of times um, and just bought all of her stuff. So this got reissued. This is a track that was released in 1982 which is called Brave New World, which was from her album called The Changeling. One of my favourite pictures of her wearing black contact lenses, uh, amazing hair. I'm guessing some of it wasn't real. I think maybe the extensions at the side weren't real, but I think the hair on the top was real. Um, the amazing logo, which I always loved, and then she did away with that when she went solo, because obviously she was in a band called Toya back in the early days. Um, but this is um, a full track, 10 inch, which is coloured vinyl, red vinyl, very nice. Um, but all four tracks unreleased, originally seen on TV. Um, Brave New World Razzmatazz mix, which was on the TV show called Razzmatazz. If you were a kid back in the early 80s, you would have remembered that. Um, Street Creature, again, the Razzmatazz mix. 
and on the other side Dawn Chorus from the 655 special which was a TV show that she performed it on and Aia which was the 1982 version of the big live favourite that she's always played so that was released on Cherry Red um, which I love not only because it's 10 inch but also because it's unreleased and the pictures are different to the pictures that were on the original release. I'll show you actually because I've got the picture disc which I bought when this came out originally obviously from 1982 but if you look at the pictures <laughs> different shots slightly different shots and obviously the back there you go so yeah an absolute treat for Toya fans and Craig Astley who's been putting this together he's compiled it all uh, and the Cherry Red team just done an amazing job with all these reissues there's another one to come I think two possibly to come uh, this year we've got the 1981 Drury Lane show that she did for the Old Grey Whistle Test which was televised to millions on Christmas Eve in 1981 that's coming out uh, reissue and also the Changeling all being well fingers crossed her album from 82 that that was, that was from. Um, that's coming out later this year as well. So one more thing, let me just show you this. So this is um, something that came out on Halloween last year. I'm a little bit late to actually tell you about this, but I wanted to tell you about it on a previous vlog. So Susie's coming back with um, more solo shows later this year. I'm a massive fan of Susie. I've seen her so many times over the years, not just with the creatures and on her own, but also with Susie and the Banshees. I've just loved them. Um, for so many years but this is an album called All Souls which was a collection of songs um, personal favourites I think of Susie and uh, Steve Severin who was in the band it's songs from the Banshees back catalogue that have a spooky theme I mean you're probably thinking to yourself Susie and the Banshees there's quite a lot to choose from but yeah they've whittled it down to 10 tracks Fireworks, Halloween, Supernatural Thing uh, Spellbound, Rawhead and Bloody Bones for Peep Show album, Peekaboo as well. So this is again another very special coloured vinyl with gorgeous design artwork and pumpkin orange vinyl. Absolutely love that. I was so tempted to buy this album again because it was in the HMV sale um, just on black vinyl but then I thought to myself I've got it, I don't need it again. Back in the days, when I was a teenager, I used to buy stuff um, by bands and artists that I was just obsessed by, and I used to buy all the formats. What's all that about? So I'd buy the vinyl, I'd buy the CD, and the picture disc, and the colour vinyl. I spent a fortune, wouldn't do it now. Well, I actually would do it now. <laughs> So there you go, so um, some of the vinyl I bought recently, um, if you've watched any of the previous vlogs that I've done, you'll see that occasionally I will show you what music I'm listening to and what albums I've been buying and what vinyl I've been buying because I'm a bit of a vinyl obsessive as you can see from the vinyl behind me. Um, but now let me show you the recipe that I've put together for my lunch which I've just had which was delicious. Uh, let's go into the kitchen and show you what I made. Okay, so this is something that I normally do um, when I'm in the mood for some nori, which is um, like a seaweed sheet, um, which is really nutritious. But it's always something that's forgotten about, unless you eat fish, and obviously if you're vegan, you don't eat fish. So I'm gonna put together these wraps, which are so easy to make. I mean, a bit faffy, because there's a lot of ingredients you need, but normally it takes about 20 minutes to half an hour. I absolutely love these so many nutritious ingredients which um, is just a really easy light lunch but anyway these are made up with normally with sweet potato but I haven't got any sweet potato so I'm going to use normal potato which I'm going to parboil and then I'm going to put them in the air fryer with some carrot um, but I'll chop these up a little bit smaller because obviously if you're, you're going to use these in the wrap you need the pieces of vegetables quite quite small and then I'm going to make a uh, sauce with tahini, which is sesame seed paste. I'm going to mix that up with some flavourings. So I've put the potato in the water just to parboil them for a few minutes, and then they go in the air fryer. 
The carrots don't need to be parboiled because they can go straight into the air fryer on the roast setting. These are the nori sheets that I was talking about. I bought a bulk load of these, um, 50 sheets in a pack. I can't remember how much they were, but I got them on Amazon. You can get them in some Tesco's or Sainsbury's supermarkets. But anyway, these were, I think these were about six, seven pounds which um, has taken me ages to get through, because obviously there's 50 sheets. If you're gonna have a lunch using these, uh, which is what I mainly use these for, I don't know, um, you probably only need two or three sheets. Let me just show you what these look like. So, I, what I normally do is I normally cut these or tear these into six pieces or maybe four pieces, and then you can use those as the sheets for the wraps and then obviously put the vegetables inside. So next up I'm going to make the sauce while the potatoes are parboiling. Um, I usually use about two tablespoons of tahini if I'm making this recipe for two people. So if you're just going to make it for yourself just use one tablespoon. So depending on the type of sauce that you want, the flavourings, um, here's an example of what I use. I use the juice of half a lemon, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, sometimes I put a little bit of cider vinegar in, maybe just a teaspoon or two teaspoons. If you want a smoky taste, and I love this stuff, this is liquid smoke, which is essentially just water that's just been smoked. Um, I don't think there's anything else in there actually, if I check the ingredients. So it's water, hickory, smoke flavour, vinegar, molasses and colour, which is plain caramel and a bit of salt as well. I bought this as well, which is brown rice vinegar and maybe a little bit of soy sauce. So I've added all those ingredients. What you'll find is if you don't add water straight away because you've added the lemon juice, it does go quite thick. Obviously I've added the, the smoke water and the cider vinegar, so it might not be that thick, but yeah, it's starting to thicken up now. So what I'll probably do after this is add a couple of tablespoons of water just to thin it down a little bit. You can have peanut butter actually, which is a really nice addition. So there we go, that's probably the consistency that I like. Um, not too thick, not too runny, but obviously enough to cook the vegetables in the wrap once you're done. Obviously not much oil in there because we've got the sesame seed uh, paste, the tahini. Quite high in protein, as you can see there, which is um, per 100 grams, I guess, 25 grams of protein, so a quarter of that. Is protein. So what I like to do normally is serve the sauce in one of these little wine glasses. You can use like a little pot or something. So I've part boiled the potatoes for a few minutes. I'm going to turn those off now, drain them, and then I'm going to put them in the air fryer. So what I've done is I've chopped up the carrot quite small and also the potato as well because if you're putting these in the wrap you don't want anything too big because it's just going to you're not going to be able to hold it in the wrap properly but um, obviously normally with sweet potato that would count as a one of your five a day normal normal potato doesn't but what the hell still gonna taste good and then just add a tablespoon of olive oil give them a mix and then shove them in the air fryer about eight minutes ten minutes madam has decided she needs to go for a walk halfway through my lunch preparation so I'm putting the potato and the carrot in the air fryer. By the way, I've put some salt and pepper on this as well. So next I'm going to toast some pumpkin seeds. Absolutely love these when they're toasted. So while they're toasting, I've just chopped up some greens, so I've chopped up some lettuce. I mean, you could pretty much use any vegetable. You can use cucumber, radish, tomato. I mean, the list is endless, really, but this is all I've got in, so this is what I'm using. Again, like I say, there's not that many ingredients, but I've got carrot, potato. Sorry, I'm eating a bit of um, seaweed wrap. Lettuce, got the pumpkin seeds to the top as well, and obviously the, the sauce, which goes over the top. What I normally do is I normally fill these. I mean, obviously, these pieces are quite big, so I'll probably chop them up even smaller. And I've got these um, squares, which obviously are the wraps. So essentially these are just pizza breads, an equivalent, but obviously a healthy version if you're watching your carbs. I'm not, but I find these delicious. There we go. <laughs> and then a little bit of sauce. 
and shove it in your mouth. I'm probably gonna burn myself. Oh my God. <laughs> mm. Delight. I'm heading from Waterloo over to Embankment for the first of hopefully many gigs, DJ gigs, at Woof, which is a night, a Friday night event at Circa Embankment. I cannot wait. Now this is kind of like full circle for me because I remember playing Mega Woof. It must have been 15 years ago, maybe 13 years ago. It was actually a very good friend of mine, Adam Turner who recommended me, so thank you Adam. He put a recommendation out to Nico, who's running it. Oh, one of the, one of the guys who's running it, Daz is the other guy, uh, Daz Sorned. So here we are, just about to start, fingers crossed. DJ booth is so pet shop boys, I love it. Look at that. <laughs> Bye, Circa. So yeah, really good night. Um, lovely to see Zach. He played an amazing set. And now I've got this for you. Look at this for you guys. So I'm gonna finish this week's vlog on the bridge overlooking this amazing city. I know a couple of weeks ago I wanted to move back to Cornwall, but it is an amazing city. I haven't changed my mind. If I won the lottery, I probably would move back. <laughs> so, a little update. I had a little um, health test from Aviva. It was like a blood test. It was hideous. I had to basically prick my finger with the little pricker <laughs> that they sent in the post. And it was so hard. It was like, I had to get the blood out of my finger and I literally had to push the blood from my palm to my finger through into this little container. Easier said than done, seriously. But anyway, I got the results the next day. It was amazing. And the results said that 
overall I'm okay, but I'm a little bit on the borderline for gout and cholesterol. So I'm not high cholesterol, but I'm on the borderline. So I need to watch what I'm eating. I do try, it's so hard. Um, but yeah, overall, everything is in between. Everything is where it should be, I think. Possibly over the danger side more than it should be. So, yeah, a new health regime starts on Monday. I've had a couple of drinks tonight. But yeah, a great night and a good week actually, overall. I hope you've had a good week as well. Thank you very much for watching and please do subscribe. It really helps. I get slow subscribers, slow. Um, lots on this channel, movie reviews. A little insight into what I do during the week and the occasional interview with musicians, artists, film stars, directors. So yes, thank you and I'll see you next week, next Sunday, 11am. See you there. Have a good one.